Good morning. Welcome to the show. The talk continues right here on the Morning Scramble. We're coming to you from Prescott, Northern Arizona. Prescott is Arizona's Christmas city. We encourage you to visit us over the holiday time of the year. Well, any time of the year, of course, visit Prescott. In the studio right now with me is author Ronnie Herman DeJong. We're going to be talking about her two books, In the Shadow of the Sun and Rising from the Shadow of the Sun. Uh, Ronnie, welcome. Thanks for talking to us and coming back. We talked in 2004 mm -hmm. about your first book in the shadow of the sun right. okay give us uh, give us an overview uh, give us a foundation here for what we're talking about this is based on the book first book is based on your mother's journal yes. she was uh, you and she in a concentration camp in the uh, South Pacific mm -hmm. during World War II right. uh, tell us that story my mom and dad both came from the Netherlands, and mm -hmm. my dad was a pilot. He learned to fly seaplanes. So he was stationed in the Dutch East Indies, mm -hmm. which was a, a colony at the time. It's now called Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And the naval base was in Surabaya, so that's where we lived. That is now Sri Lanka? No, it's okay. Surabaya. But, it's still Surabaya. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so I was born there, my little sister was born there, and then the war broke out. The the Japanese were coming from the north. They approached Java from the north. So my dad got the order to burn the base, mm -hmm. burn all the secret documents on the base, mm -hmm. and leave with his squadron just before the Japanese encircled the island in the uh, submarines. And my mom and my sister and I were left in Surabaya. Along with many. Men, oh, men, men, women, and children. And so the Japanese did come into Surabaya on March the 8th, 1942. That was pretty soon after the bombs on uh, on Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that yeah, was in December. December so in March, right. they already reached our island. Mm -hmm. So then they separated men from women and children, and they put men in men's camps and women and children in another camps. camp. Yeah. And for three and a half years, they proceeded to slowly starve us to death. We had very little food, uh, hardly any medication. And when they came, I, I understand that they burned uh, the naval base, they yep. burned all paper, they burned everything. Everything. Okay, now your mother managed to, during the time, uh, I'm going to say three years? Three and a half years. Okay, yeah. so your mother managed during that time, obviously, to take care of you and your sister. Right. And write a journal. Yes. Now, I understand that had to be a secret. How did she... It was secret because we were not allowed to have pen and paper. How did she camps. secure... She got this before the war started. Okay. Because um, war in Europe had already started so right. my mom in the colony used to write weekly letters with her to her mom and dad well i can understand yeah. how she had so, that with her uh, on the island yeah. but after the japanese uh, put you uh, in concentration camps yeah. i'm so surprised this wasn't confiscated it would have been if it would have been red or blue but it was black and it was at the bottom of her suitcase wow. and she smuggled it through the camps okay. and somehow she smuggled a pen uh, to write her letters uh -huh. so the beginning is just how my oh, I was born and my little sister was born. Okay. The war was in Europe, so we could not communicate. And so then the Japanese entered our town, and she wrote down every single thing that happened, how we were slowly starved to death, what we got to eat, what we did during the day, slave labor and everything. Okay, so we're saying three and a half years. Yes. You were three years old when the Japanese uh, occupied the island. Right. Okay, that means you were six and a half going on seven at the end of the war. Right. How much do you remember, how, how much can you say that is a conscious memory of the time, uh, not based so much on what you read in your mother's journal, mm -hmm. uh, are there any memories that are vivid that you actually remember? Now, seven and a half years or seven years when they, you were uh, afraid, you probably have memories of that. Uh, I have a, f a couple of memories. My, my mom protected us, it kept us in the houses when uh, punishments were taking place on the square. But okay. the things that I remember are a, a couple of bad things. Uh, towards the end of the war, we were in a very small house. I was uh, in, a, in a little room with 10 of us. Mm -hmm. I slept in the top bunk. 
I saw just before the lights went out, my doll wa had uh, bed bugs, and the bed bugs came out and bit me, stung me. And my mom had uh, wet edema, and she could not climb up to the yeah. top bunk to help me. She gave me a rag, and she said, "Kill them." And the smell of the bed bugs will stay with me forever. forever. It's right. the same as the smell of cilantro. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rising from the Shadow of the Sun is the second book. Now, in this book, you give us a foundation. You give us a little bit of synopsis. Now, in this book, you do what? The first part of this book, because it's such an important story, is about the camps, okay. based on my mom's journal. And the second part uh, is my life after the camps. I want to talk to younger generations and tell them about the camps, but also that it is possible to get out from wherever you are from whatever bad background you're from you can uh, rise, rise up above it above it and make your dreams come true on Amazon uh, the book is five stars yes yes the first book is out of print yes uh, collectors you can buy it though uh, it is uh, there's a few uh, books that you can buy and they are yeah. collectors copies right now but the second book is on Amazon and it is a five star so look it up you can get both stories right there the second book is is the is the great way to go there thank you Ronnie for being here okay you're welcome